I'm Wait, it's Temphy Abyss here, and today we're gonna have some fun, right? Now, um, I know people have done this quite a long time ago, yeah, where people used to ask questions and expect comments and video responses, you have people answering the questions, yeah, which get, you know, which means we know each other a little better and that type of thing, right? Um, well, since how I, I've been um, doing Q&As quite a lot, yeah, you guys have been asking me questions, yeah, I thought I'd return the favour today and I ask you guys some questions today, yeah, about some, about, you know, gaming related questions, yeah, which I feel that we'll know each other a little better, yeah, we'll know each other about our gaming careers a bit more and what we think about games a bit more, yeah, so um, I've got 20 questions here for you guys and I'm expecting comments and video responses as well. If you can't do a video response yet, yeah, then, then comments will be good enough, yeah. So I hope quite a lot of people, yeah, will comment on this one. So, the first question I'd like to ask everybody is, what is the first console you ever saw? And that, and also that doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't have to mean the one that you first actually played. What is the first one you actually saw, like right in front of you? The first ever console that I saw was the Atari 2600. It's also the first one I played as well. And the second question that I have for you is what game are you best at? What game are you the one? You are the man on it. That, the game that you feel nobody can touch you on. <laughs> the game here that I'm going to have to say that I'm best at, I feel, is Tekken. I'm usually good at a few, maybe a few other games and everything there. But I feel my confidence lies in Tekken. I feel on the best. I haven't been shining much on it recently, though. Yeah, but I feel that I can get back to it, get back in it, and just do the best I can at it. Although some people have already kicked my ass already, but it's still the game that I feel I'm best at. And the next question is: What is your favourite game character? Unfortunately, I can't say what my best character is because I'm in the middle of editing a video called my top 10 beat-em-up characters and number one obviously is going to be that, but I don't want to give it away now. So there's your hint, it's a beat-em-up character. So, but still tell me yours please. And question number four, what do you think is the best era of gaming? What was your best era of gaming? There's so many, there is a few loads of errors I like in the 90s that I love the most. But I definitely have to say the best one has got to be um, the PlayStation 1 days. Because it had all the most of the games that I was into. So like so many of them all on one console. And you know, it was the best times, I had the most fun times. I gotta say that, 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 was, that, that was the best times. PlayStation 1 days were the best for me. And five, what is your worst game genre? My worst game genre happens to be manager games. I had a feeling that people may think here yeah, that my worst would be first person shooter games, but no, it's actually manager games, really. I can't stand manager games. I feel, uh, to me, I feel they're very, very boring, you know, think, doing, doing tactics and ridiculous advanced formations and stuff and everything like that, yeah. I mean, I've got to admit, a manager's job is very tough, right, yeah, but for gaming, it's just not for me. It's just not my type of thing. Maybe if it was, like, managing an MMA fighter or boxing managing. Nah, 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 nah. I just don't like it. So I don't, I don't like manager games. So that's my worst genre. Six. When it comes to retro games, do you like playing them if they're redone or do you like them authentic? Now, me personally, I prefer authentic. I mean, yeah, I, I may have yeah, this, yeah, but this was given to me by my friend, right? You know, so you know, it's like when I when I when I mean by would you play Street to Rage two on this, or would you play the original Street to Rage two on the Mega Drive? Me personally, I'll play it on the Mega Drive, yeah, because I like using the actual Mega Drive controller for start, as and I like the authenticity to like just play it you know just just play it from the actual mega drive itself and everything that yeah personally it doesn't look that bad on my HD TV looks alright to me I don't see I don't see the problem that people usually have but yep I'm all 
I'm authentic. That's me. And the next question. Are you normal handed, arcade handed or active handed? So what do I mean by that? Well, let's use a racing game for example. If I was to play um, normal handed, it just means I'm playing normal. You know, racing. You know, just playing normal right here. If I was arcade handed, use a steering wheel. You know what I mean? You know, that's, that's, that's what I mean like that. And of course, if you was active handed, that means you'd play, you would either play with a pad, but put the six axes on, you know, but this is PS3, yeah? So, you'd, so you're, you're more like this instead of using the analog sticks to turn, you know? You know, same thing like with the Wiimote, what you'd probably do is put the steering wheel thing on, right? And then you drive like this, you know? Or like with the Kinect for the Xbox or anything, you're, you're doing this. That means you're active handed, right? Now, same thing with, with a beat em up game, normal handed, controller, arcade handed, arcade stick, duh, and um, active handed would be games like um, Dark Wind, where you put the gloves on and you actually punch and everything, and that, you know, you actually punch in yourself. You know, obviously, no active hand can play on Tekken. So, what am I? I'm, at, I'm arcade handed, because I have the arcade st um, stick and the steering wheel. So, that's definitely me. Number eight. Have you ever bought the same console twice? Yes, definitely. I have bought yeah, loads of consoles twice. I think I bought the Commodore 64 about three times. I bought um, the Atari 2600 twice. Um, I bought three black PS2s and one silver PS2. Um... I've got a Game Boy, a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy Advance. Does that count? Mm. Yeah, 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 we'll make that count um, for today. I've got um, a NES, the English one, and a custom made um, English and Japanese combination one. No, that, that one won't count because it's not official. But um, yeah, I bought consoles twice. Have you ever bought any consoles twice? N number nine. What is your favourite soundtrack to a game? Huh. By a clear mile, Streets of Rage 2. That's definitely mine. And ten. Have you ever played the Video Challenger? That is probably the most rarest console ever. And it's the only console that I know where the games are videotapes of course this isn't one this is just a normal thing but uh, no I haven't unfortunately one of my friends actually had it but he lost the sensor when I went around his house to play it and um, he said he was going to find it unfortunately he moved out this was over 10 years ago anyway by the way so no I haven't played it but I swear to God, I remember reading it in um, the in um, the paper that one of these games was actually Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, this is the VHS we're talking about. You know, for VCRs. Oh well. And for question eleven, I'm gonna keep this one simple: graphics or gameplay? Gameplay, definitely. You know, if a game here had fantastic graphics, but no gameplay, it's hardly a game. But if it's a game that has rubbish graphics, but then fantastic gameplay, it would still be addictive. You'd still be able to play it. It's just like the normal Nintendo days. You know, all brilliant. And for question 12, have you ever clocked Super Mario Bros. 1 on the NES without using the warp zones? Unfortunately, no. I have never clocked um, Super Mario Bros. 1 um, without using the warp zones. It's pretty sad, really. But I know so many other people who have not clocked it without using the warp zones. Because the thing is, Super Mario Bros. 1, the warp zones, they were the easiest to find. You didn't even need a guidebook to show you where the warp zones was. Everybody 
you know, everybody knew about it, yeah, so not many people, I don't think that many people have actually done it, yeah, so be honest, have you really done it without the warp zones? I'm honest, are you honest? 13 is also another quick question, cartridge or CDs? I definitely got to say cartridges, I always liked the way cartridges always used to just load up straight away, with CDs, they always would load, sometimes, you know, it, it could get annoying, but even even Blu-rays, even as powerful as they are, um, they still sometimes take their long loading. I remember Motorstorm. Motorstorm used to load so much ages and everything and all that, right? Yeah. And most and and I think and CDs scratch after a while. Even if you take care of it perfectly, yeah. After a while, it just scratches. You wonder, okay, how, why did that scratch for? You know what I mean? Now. Um, the best of the, the, the disadvantage about cartridges is is they probably don't carry as much as um, CDs, but I reckon they could do because technically, when you look at memory sticks like this, these are actually cartridges. If you look carefully, it's got the circuits and that. These are actually cartridges. Here's an SD card. So I'm thinking this could still they could they could make games and put them on this. Visualize it this way. If I was to have you know, all the games, like that was the size of these, and probably st stacked them up right, yeah? Let's imagine I had 26 um, of those. It'd probably come up to at least about, yeah, just there. Nice little stack there. That'd be a bit more neat and tidy than all these 26 over here, wouldn't you say? 14. What console do you have the least games for? Handhelds included, so if you've got a DS or PSP and you've got less games for them, you can say that as well. The console that I have the least games for is the GameCube. I only had four games for that, and I lost two. Friends of mine lent me two, but I doubt they want it back, so, so they're probably mine now. So yeah, I only got four games for that. And for question 15, how many players have you played with in a local multiplayer game? What's the most you've played? The most I've ever played in a local multiplayer was six. One day I went around my friend's house with my multi-tap and his friends brought around his, their multi-tap. We had six people there. We were playing FIFA 2000 and... Oh, damn. What, what, what FIFA was it? Oh, man. I forgot what FIFA it was here, yeah, but it was wicked, man. It was me and me and my friend and his brother versus all their friends, yeah. You know, us three versus them. And we matched them up, boy. We were matching up. It was wicked, yeah. We were scoring some wicked goals. And it was a laugh. It was such jokes and stuff. You know, never ever got a chance to play eight players. But, man, six players was just wicked enough, boy. Have you ever played more? Did you, have you ever played eight players locally? Now for 16, what two games do you reckon should cross over? I have a feeling loads of people are going to talk about um, Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter when it comes to two games crossing over. But you know what two games that I personally reckon should cross over right now? I think FIFA and Pro Evolution Soccer. You know, we could have the ultimate football game. Because FIFA has its disadvantages and advantages. And Pro Evolution Soccer has its advantages and disadvantages. Both games come together. We could have the ultimate football game. And, then it, and every fan yeah, can stop the bloody arguing with each other as well. 17. What is the worst glitch you ever encountered? Worst glitches that I've ever faced was actually in Dead Ball Zone. You know, when I used to do tournament and everything like that, yeah? Could you believe, yeah, the game used to freeze while saving? That would, that would fuck up your memory card and everything. You know, and that's the way it always was. It wasn't even, it wasn't even like, like, it did it once, it did it bare times. I had to use a memory card all for Dead Bull Zone all by itself. I couldn't have any of my other files on there. It was disgraceful. It was disgusting. That's the worst glitch that I've ever that I've ever encountered. 18. How much percentage would you think storyline matters in a game? I'm gonna have to say 3.65. I personally don't believe storylines need are that much needed in games. I'm a person who just picks up a controller and just plays the game. You know, I'm not really much into the storylines. I mean, when when I hear, I mean, I know most people get pissed off with basic storylines like, oh, you need to save the princess, or you need to rescue your girlfriend. 
to me, those are the storylines I need to know. So it gives me a reason to just beat the fuck out of some people. So that's so I I feel so when it, so when it's a complex storyline like some movie type thing, I'm not really that interested. Question nineteen: Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, Master Chef, Crash Bandicoot, Solid Snake. Who's your character? You know, let's imagine you was just about to start a new line of franchises now with, with your character. Who's your character? Maybe he can be a big name later. Who's your character? My character is Zape D, the MMA monster. And there's going to be... I ain't going to say much about him there, yeah. But um, there'll be more on him later. Question 20. You are now the games director. If you was to make a game, right, what genre would your game be? My game genre would be a combination of a side-scrolling beat-em-up with an action adventure beat them up as well, you know, in both a 3D world and also in a two on a 2D interface, you know, give a good mixture. So, and there'll be more on that later. And for the bonus question, you didn't know there was going to be a bonus, right? For the people who have listened to my music, right? What game genre do you think here yeah, that my music would actually match? I think here yeah, that my music would could match here yeah, some old school racing games like um, Super Hang On, maybe the old Ridge Racers, maybe the new Ridge Racers as well could probably work. You know, maybe some old Road Rash ones. You know, some of these old school racing ones. I feel that few of my music could actually match. Maybe not my ambient tunes. I know people are probably thinking that my music should match like Streets of Rage type games or um, some sort of beat em up games. I don't think my music's really hard enough for beat em up personally, yeah. But maybe some next tracks that I do in time, the future tracks, maybe they probably be beat em up material. So we'll soon see about that. Well, people, that was Temp's 20 gaming questions. So um, please leave comments or video responses. Now, there's a possibility that your comment is going to be too big for the box. So what you do is type most of it in the box then sort of reply to your own comments, yeah, type in the rest, and then it'll keep it in nice good order, and that, so we can um, read about, uh, read what your answers to these questions are. I think, yeah, they're um, 20 good mini topics, you know, just, just, just so we all know about, about everything and all that, so um, I'm hoping you enjoyed the video, and I'm hoping you enjoyed the questions, and I'm hoping you're going to enjoy taking part. You know, if you'd like to do a video response or an audio response, you know. So, um, that's it, guys. Um, thanks very much. I'll see you all later. Love who you are.